between uh, new, the new avalanche of quickie divorces. Divorce applications increased by a massive 92% uh, the month the no fault divorce law change. Well, uh, I am not married. I've never been divorced. Maybe I will in the future. I don't know. Uh, Sarah Tivison is the divorce coach and is with us now. And it's, it's great to have you in the studio. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me in today. Uh, this is really, really interesting. 51% of women believe lifelong marriage is not practical. 46% of men don't. I know you because we're chatting in the in the uh, in the break and you volunteered the fact that you are divorced and that's why you are the divorce or well, that's part of the reason you are the divorce coach. Yeah. W why are people getting divorced so much? What is quickie divorce actually? First of all, before we get to that. Well, I think the term is a little bit misleading, actually, because it's not that you rush into that decision necessarily. It just means that the process to actually get divorced, the legal side, can be a bit quicker now because we have no-fault divorce, which came in April 2022. So you don't need to say, well, you've actually, you know, committed adultery. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's a, this was a sort of prehistoric thing to say. But, you know, it's not not that there is... There's is no blame. There's no blame. Yeah, OK. It's absolutely. just we, we actually just don't get on anymore. Yes. We've decided to get divorced. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's much better and a much better way of doing it but it also means the process is sped up a little bit so you don't get drawn into all the arguments so yeah it, it means that the process is quicker but most people take quite a long time to think about getting divorced because it's a massive decision yeah and it's known as the second most traumatic life experience we go through after death of a loved one yeah. so i think it's unrealistic to think that people just make those snap decisions i'm sure there are some people but most people it's something they think long and hard about certainly of course and, and making the process easier you presumably think that's a good thing. Uh, making the process is a lot easier. I think that nobody sort of is there to say, should you get married or not? So we're all adults. We need to make our own decisions, I think, that if we want to get divorced, we should be able to do that. Um, I'm actually the patron of a domestic abuse charity as well, and I think having the freedom to make a decision without having to have someone else approve it and go through the blame game, is, it, makes it, it makes it a lot better, actually, for so many people. I had a discussion, actually, this week about divorce because I knew this was coming up, and I spoke to someone who has a very strong Christian faith and really believes in marriage and things that that is a very, very fundamentally important part of their lives. And the person I was speaking to uh, has been married to their husband for a very, I mean, decades, very, very long time. And uh, I just sort of said, you know, this is a very important institution, but it's a very different institution to what it is now. And some of the uh, statistics here, 78% of married people would not leave their marriage even though they no longer desired their spouse. And actually that desire on the sexual side is something which is, I would argue, fundamental to any marriage. But at the same time, there are many other things that people think about as well. Financial stability, children, of course. Yeah. But there, there must be a lot of people who stay in marriages for far too long and then maybe don't have the liberation and don't live the lives that they want. Well, I think that's the thing. I think divorce has lost its stigma a, a lot now. And in fact, there are a lot of people saying that divorce is chic. Now, I wouldn't go that far, but I do think getting through a divorce and being able to survive and thrive afterwards is quite chic. I think if you can do the work on yourself. But I think you're right. There's a lot of reasons why people stay stuck in relationships that aren't healthy. And it might be religious opinions and, and views, but also financial reasons mean that you can't separate very easily. Or maybe it's because you think you're doing it for the children. But again, there's another side to that that if the kids look at you and they think gosh you know you're staying together and that's what marriage is that's what love is when you don't get on or it is unhealthy again we've got to look at what that is teaching well there's a lot generation. of psychological evidence to say that children thrive more when parents are happy and you know if you're not happy in your relationship maybe a, sp a, a split family. I mean, I know loads of single parents who do a really, really good job, but at the same time, I, it's, it's also, sorry, I, I find marriage a real mystery, how you know at the age of sort of 25 or 35 or whatever, well, actually, no matter what happens in the next, you know, 50 years, I'm going to stay with this person. You know, yeah. when people stand up there, this is part of the reason I'm not married. I mean, there are many reasons I'm not married, <laughs> but uh, mainly to do with other people. But, um, but, but I, I just think I've been to a lot of weddings, and yeah. when they stand there and say, you know, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. Well, I mean, do you know what it's like if someone loses their job? In sickness and in health, if someone gets a life-limiting condition, if they are in a vegetative state for a long time, do you stay married to that person? I mean, there's so many aspects of this. I just find the whole thing fascinating. Well, I think a lot of people do, which is why the survey shows that only 36% of people believe in marriage lasting a lifetime. And I think lots of things are shifting. You know, 17% say that monogamy is unrealistic and unnatural. What do you think? Um, I think that... 
there are some people that want that security and again it depends on your attachment type do you want to be with someone and have that so-called stability i think it is a, a you know it you can be cynical but is that cynicism protecting you from getting into relationships from getting hurt i also think i see a lot of clients saying i'm never going to get into a relationship ever again or mm. get married a lot of that is because they're trying to define their next love story based on the ending of their last yes, love story yes and i have a friend who is in the process of getting divorced at the moment who is with another partner and has been for a little while and he is absolutely adamant that he is not going to get married to the new partner who I actually think they would have a very happy stable lovely marriage if they did get married yeah. but that's not my decision that's his decision yeah. but I know that he has been very very uh, traumatized I think yeah. uh, certainly certainly there's hurt from the way that the previous marriage ended I do think that the process of divorce is very traumatizing I think for a lot of people it's devastating and that's why it's important to do the work because you can get through it I mean actually there was a survey by Maguire family law I think it was last year that it showed that 65% of the divorcees that they interviewed said that their life had massively improved in all areas since their breakup. Mm. But, you know, sometimes coming out of something can be liberating. So it's not all doom and gloom. There is a positive that you can turn it around. Obviously, doing the work is, is important. But, yeah, I do think that if you hold on to the past, that can really impact the quality of your life moving forward. So it's time to think, right, I'm not going to judge the future by what's happened to me before. Is this broken down anyway in terms of heterosexual marriages versus is gay marriages or same sex marriages? It, it, not, not it's broken the down. same. Yeah, and this it's is the, the same, thing. Yeah. Everything we go through, it's the emotional roller coaster and the practical challenges are the same no matter what your age, yeah. what your preference. Yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. I uh, interviewed a guy in New York, a gay rights activist, many, many years ago, and he uh, was advocating gay marriage and he got married to his partner actually in um, Canada, I think, okay. uh, and then moved back to New York where gay marriage was not legal at that stage. And he said he had a magnet on his fridge, which I will never forget, which said, All gay people want is the right to get married so they can be as miserable. As, as straight people <laughs> in marriages. So there we are. Um, well, this is absolutely fascinating. I wonder as well, um, in terms of the, the, the quickie divorce, I mean, is that is that in itself going to be a slight stigma uh, for some people or do people understand the process? I mean, you're obviously, as the divorce coach, giving people a lot more information, including today, about this. But uh, will people say, oh, well, maybe it's too easy to get out of a marriage. Maybe you should work at it a bit more. I definitely think you need to do the work first. And it does, there are arguments, and a lot of people say it does make it too easy. But I, I just don't think people are going to, you know, if we're adults, we can make our own mistakes. So how many mistakes do we make that we learn from and make us a better person? So I think that we should have the ability to make those decisions, even if it maybe is you're rushing in and you live to regret it. We're adults. We've got to suck that up and make our own decisions. So I don't think people do rush into it. Most people do try and work at it. And that's definitely the advice that I would give. Work at it. Try everything. But if it's not working then getting out of an unhealthy or an unsatisfactory relationship mm. is much better for you moving forward. And now, you know, people getting divorced at 25, 30, you know, it, the stigma is gone and there is life after that. So you can reinvent yourself and be happier and more confident than you've ever been. And so actually, it, it's weird because people don't know your history. People don't come to you. You know, if you're meeting someone new in a relationship or you're dating or whatever, they don't know what's happened before. So why should you that, let that influence that, that relationship. Les is in Cheshire. He has been in touch on text. He says, Hi, Peter. I've been married twice and divorced twice. Each time it's been an irrevocable breakdown, which has been brought on by my ex. I'm now 64, haven't had a relationship since 2006, and can now be in control of my TV remote control. <laughs> I've never looked back since. Well, Les, if you're happily single, uh, that is that is okay for you. I'm, I'm uh, happy for you. It's very, very interesting, actually, because have you ever been, Sarah, to a wedding where you knew, knew it wasn't going to work out? Yes. I think I've been to three, and I was right three. each time. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you've fallen in love, and you can't be told in that moment. Yes, and, yeah. and it's, it's often, you know, it's a very brave person who goes up to, to someone before before a wedding or after an engagement and says, are you sure? Yeah. Is this the right thing to do? Yeah, I mean, people said that to me, to be honest, before I got married, and you I wish thought, you'd listen no. to them? Uh, no, because then I wouldn't have had my son, I wouldn't have been on the journey, I definitely wouldn't be helping thousands of people around the world with my work now. But I, I do think, though, that you've got to go fully and you've got to give it your best, but also spot the red flags. There are usually <laughs> warning signs, right? And when you look back at that, and I don't know if you speak to your friends, that those three marriages, 
if they'd be honest and say actually there were some warning signs but I have well, one of them one of them certainly has the other two I, I haven't quite uh, had that conversation with but um, one of them's re one of the other two is, is remarried and the other one uh, not not at the moment so very very interesting uh, very very interesting but then there are some weddings you go to and just like these people are going to be together yeah. forever they're just wonderful happy occasions but it's know. okay to be single right as well it's okay to be you can be happy and single you yes. don't have to be in a partnership I think yes. there's a lot of pressure on everyone these days to find that well, I'm single partner. and I'm pretty happy about it yeah. uh, there's also my friend Fiona who's a very very funny person uh, said um, we were each other's plus ones for a lot of weddings uh -huh. we had a lot of the same friends and we'd yeah. go along together and so on and uh, we're around around the time that you often go to weddings 27 28 we just went to loads of them it was it was just it was really expensive <laughs> uh, went to loads of them and then it stopped for a while uh, and then it started up again uh -huh. and I said to Fiona who's very funny she's a producer at a different broadcasting organization and I said uh, Fiona it's weird we, we were going to all these weddings now we're not now we stopped for a while now we're going to these weddings again and her eyes narrowed slightly and she just went Yes, there's a lot of post-30 compromises going on. <laughs> I do think that especially when we get to that clock ticking age where it's like, I need to marry the next person. And again, that's not always the right decision. It's not always going to be the yeah. right relationship for yeah. you. And there's other options now. We don't have to get married. You know, that people are taking less risks, I think, these days. What about civil partnerships? Is that is that a thing that lots of people do or not really? I mean, is that is that is that something that... Uh, I mean, I, I think if you, if you aren't religious, if you don't believe in sort of marriage itself, yeah. which to me is a religious concept maybe you should just be in the civil partnerships maybe that's an unpopular view yeah i think a lot of people think that's a great view and other people want the whole big day but i think having that big day takes the focus away from the commitment and the actual lifelong commitment you are potentially making to someone there but again if you do go all in then hopefully you're stacking the odds that you're both going to commit and work to it so it's got more chance of working I mean, it's interesting, but I'm all for doing what you feel is right. If you mm. don't want to, don't feel pressured by everybody else. And if you've been in a tough relationship and you've come out heartbroken, I know so many people that contact me every day are dealing with heartbreak. You know, it, it's okay to go through that heartbreak. You have to, to heal. Yeah. But taking your power back and shifting that to say, you know what, I'm not going to accept that unacceptable behavior anymore. I'm going to put new boundaries in place. That is incredibly empowering and actually leads you on to feeling happier and more confident and more resilient for whatever else life has to throw at you. So uh, there are a lot of positives to redesigning your life after a breakup. It's, it, it, it can be a really positive thing for sure. Sarah, thank you very, very much indeed for your uh, for coming in. Uh, Dan and Ken says, I got no free time since my divorce many moons ago. Ready for a new relationship, but I'm probably too busy texting talk TV. Uh, <laughs> well, look up from your phone, Dan. It's always good to hear from you, Dan. But um, if you look up from your phone, you might look around and see, who knows, a new a new partner somewhere along the lines. Um, we get all sorts of messages. Sarah, thank you. First of all, I should say thank you to Sarah thank very, you. very much indeed for coming in. That is uh, Sarah Davidson, who is the divorce coach. We get all sorts of messages. Uh, sometimes we read them out, sometimes we don't because... Uh, matters of time but I definitely want to read this one out um, and I'm sure you'll completely agree with it Cardwell should be sacked for inciting civil war on the streets of Britain a truly appalling bias worthy of the BBC more of that next